Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Zack Snyder's Justice League is an epic experiment in restorative justice. Four hours of unfiltered Snyder spectacle and mythology that culminate in this chilling epilogue. An ending I'm gonna try to explain for you. But of course, spoiler warning, while you may think you know the story from the theatrical cut, trust me, Snyder has created a whole new narrative. Please find the time to watch the full thing on HBO Max, and then you can come back right here if you need any questions answered. Okay, among the many differences of the Snyder Cut is really how it embraces the nightmare sequence from Batman v Superman, the Flash's mysterious time travel cameo, in general what Snyder wanted to do to set up the DCEU going forward, and in this particular chapter of it, the villain Steppenwolf and his relationship with the true evil of this dark side. So in the movie's climax, the Justice League are able to stop the unity of the three mother boxes and defeat Steppenwolf in the coolest way possible together. Aquaman impales him on his trident, Black suited Superman punches him toward that boom tube portal, and Diana, at the last second, comes up and beheads the mother sending his head rolling to the feet of Darkseid, who, flanked by Desaad and Granny Goodness, stares down the Justice League, closes the portal, and now plans to conquer Earth and find that anti-life equation using the old ways, aka an armada of parademons. And then we move on to this epilogue sequence, narrated by Vic's father, Silas Stone, his recorded message echoing, if you think about it, the recorded wisdom left by Jor-El for his son. We catch up with all the characters as they go their separate ways. At Star Labs, Ryan Choi takes over as director of nanotechnology, setting him up to be the Atom. Bruce helps Clark get back the Kent farm, except now he adds congratulations, by the way, as Snyder now makes it so Lois is carrying a baby basket because earlier in the film, the camera lingered on her pregnancy test. Superman's gonna be a daddy. No, it's not gonna go that well for him. There's a quick shot of Batman responding to the bat signal from his war machine tank. That was from the Frank Miller Dark Knight Returns comic series. And Superman and tears open his shirt, but it is the black emblem. We see an expanded version of Lex Luthor escaping from prison, joining forces with Deathstroke, promising to form a kind of Injustice League, and revealing Batman is Bruce Wayne. But then we jump ahead to a bleak, post-apocalyptic future. Darkseid's forces have ravaged the planet. This is exactly Bruce's premonition come true. Batman has a little motley crew with him. Cyborg wearing a dirty bedsheet, the Flash wearing armor, Mira, and Deathstroke on his side. But the true wild card of this bunch, Jared Leto Joker. Hate to disappoint you, but he does not say we live in a society as he did in the trailer, but he does cackle and taunt Batman over losing people that he loved, like his parents and his adopted son, referring to Robin, whom Joker killed, of course. And Batman threatens to kill him one day, but Joker goes into a very interesting monologue. You need me to help you undo this world you created by letting her die. Poor Lois, how she suffered so. I often wonder how many alternate timelines do you destroy the world because, frankly, you don't have the cojones to die yourself. Hmm? So, as usual, I'll be the bigger man. A truce, Bruce. <laughs> as long as you have this card, a truce. But all you have to do is tear it in half and I'm happy to discuss why you sent a boy wonder to do a man's job. And Batman responds, You know, it's funny how you talk about watching people die in your arms. Because when I held Harley Quinn and she was bleeding and dying, she begged me with her last breath that when I killed you, and make no mistake, I will kill you, that I would do it slow. And I'm gonna honor that promise. Batman takes the Joker card. Joker looks shook, but then says, You almost had me there. And then Superman finds them as the heat vision glows in his eyes, but then Bruce again wakes up from this and he's greeted at his lakeside home by Martian Manhunter, John Johns. One of the members of the Justice League 7 that we have been waiting for. The other one, the Green Lantern, does show up in a really dark way. I'll get to him in a second. Here he is played by Harry Lennox, aka General Swanwick. From Batman v Superman, from Man of Steel, he was in disguise as this general the whole time, and he says he wants to help defend Earth alongside the Justice League. And Snyder closes this with a touching for Autumn, his late daughter, and over the credits plays her favorite song, Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah. This is a beautiful cover of it. But stepping back here, to understand everything we just saw with Joker and Batman this future, to understand it all fully, we gotta go back to Superman's resurrection, because in that moment, the ship warns Cyborg not to mix 
mix Kryptonian tech with this mother box tech from the planet Apocalypse. And then Victor is given this hunting vision, starting with the unity erupting, blanketing the planet and destroying it. Darkseid sitting on his throne. Diana, Wonder Woman dead on a funeral pyre as Hippolyta cries and Darkseid watches down victoriously from his ship. Darkseid stabs Aquaman with his own trident and uses Omega Beams to kill other Atlanteans. And then most chillingly, black suited Superman cradling the charred remains of someone we presume to be Lois. And look around, this is in the Batcave. And we can tell because that defaced Robin suit, the Robin killed by Joker, clearly in the background there. Darkseid places a hand on Superman's shoulder and Superman's anguish transforms into a dark resolve. And now Superman hovers over the remains of Wayne Manor, that nightmare future fully realized. The corpse of a Green Lantern is visible, looks a lot like Kilowog there. And then a Joker card floats past us, torn in half truce broken. But before I continue, this video is sponsored by Sheath Underwear. So sheath boxers are designed to keep your bits gently separated for maximum support. Take a peek under the hood. Sheath has three individual compartments to keep everything down there separate, cool, and comfortable. You got your mama kangaroo pouch here, but inside that mama kangaroo pouch, you got your little Joey sleeping bag. And I'm not calling your Joey little. Maybe, maybe you got a, a big Joey. Maybe the size of the Joey doesn't matter, fellas. Anyway, a bundle of for every bit of bundle of you. You know, traditional boxer briefs just throw everything all together, like too many people trying to squeeze into the back seat of a hatchback. Sheath has this modern ergonomic design intended to prevent skin on skin contact. Sheath is like adding a third row seating to that hatchback, so everybody's got some leg room. And I know you need lots of leg room. And thanks to this kangaroo pouch, your Joey down there ain't gonna chafe, ain't gonna need readjusting. They were invented by a US Army soldier who came up with the idea of Sheath during his second tour in Iraq, where it is very hot and not conducive for ventilation for your junk. He invented this underwear to keep your boys cool and comfortable. So click that link below and use the code new rockstars at checkout or go to sheathunderwear.com slash new rockstars for 20% off and do your boys a favor. That's sheathunderwear.com slash new rockstars or just click the link below and use the code new rockstars for 20% off. <gasps> Sheath. So yes, this epilogue is Victor's vision come true. Diana is dead. Aquaman is dead. Now Mira seeks revenge against Darkseid. Lois is dead, killed in the Batcave, which must have sent Superman into that downward spiral, allowing Darkseid to turn him against the rest of the Justice League and conquer Earth. Now, presumably, the Joker must have been involved with Lois's death. He made this happen in the Batcave for a reason, to turn Superman against Batman. How do you do this? Well, Lex and Deathstroke know that Batman was Bruce Wayne. Word could have gotten to Joker too from there, and that is why the Joker is the key to reversing this dark fate. In the vision Vic saw, that Joker card was torn, indicating this must have been a timeline where Batman broke the truce. The Joker went into how he killed Robin with glee, and at the end of that conversation, Batman killed him in rage. But what's this Joker saying about alternate timelines? Well, that connects to Barry's time travel cameo in Batman v Superman, a moment that Bruce brings up in the Snyder Cut with Diana. He said, Barry Allen was right here, and he said to me, Lois Lane is the key. And Diana says Lois is the key to Superman's heart, whatever. But Bruce is like, no, no, no. I think it's something more, something darker. Because folks, Snyder most dramatically changed the rules of the DCEU with Barry's newly revealed ability to reverse time. Something that is explored in a fascinating way in the Flashpoint Paradox storyline, which the upcoming Flash movie is going to be adapting. See, back in that resurrection scene, Barry uses his speed force to jumpstart this process, as he does in the theatrical cut, but Snyder includes a subtle little line change. Barry now adds, I don't like to break this rule, but when I approach the speed of light, crazy things happen to time. And then when he speeds down that tunnel, he doesn't just tap that mother box right as it hits the fluid, because yeah, that would be a very difficult thing to time precisely. He misses the window, but he reverses time, lifting the mother box back to its precise moment of contact, and then he taps it. And this is all to set up what he does in the final battle. Barry again misses his window to zap Cyborg into those mother boxes so Cyborg could stop the unity. Barry gets shot in the side, he's super wounded, and in that delay the mother boxes reach complete unity and boom, the world starts to end. But. Barry jumps to action. He says, I gotta go faster than the speed of light, gotta break this rule, gotta do it now. And he runs and he reverses the shockwave. As he does so, he says, make your own future, make your own past, it's all right now. 
He sinks back up to Cyborg right before that unity, and he knocks him in to finish the job. So when we saw Barry in Batman v Superman, yes, he was similarly reversing time. He's going back to try to warn Bruce to prevent Lois's death and thus prevent Superman from going to the dark side of dark side. And that's why Barry said, am I too soon? He reversed time way too early to a point where Bruce would have no idea what he's talking about. And now in this post-apocalyptic future, Bruce and Barry have tried to fix all this over and over by sending Barry back, creating the alternate timelines that Joker was talking about. But they probably failed in all those. Apparently, each reset also leaves a kind of memory because Joker knows enough to taunt Bruce over these repeated failures. It ultimately sounds like they need a truce with the Joker to spare Lois's life. They're talking to the future Joker and trying to learn from this world weary Joker, what do we need to tell your younger self to stop him from doing the thing that's going to destroy the world? And in this moment, it sounds like they found a way in. Harley Quinn. I think Bruce right here found some leverage. I'll save your love if you save the love of my friend. I gotta say, folks, this is a dark, complex, richly world-building ending that Snyder was able to construct here, and I would love to see more if Warner would ever greenlight Snyder's follow-up, but if Snyder's ready to move on, hey, it does sound like a lot of this will be explored in the upcoming Flash film, so in a way, the Snyderverse has been restored. I do plan to do a scene-by-scene -scene Easter egg breakdown of this whole Snyder cut, but... I ask you for patience. Folks, this thing was four hours. It's gonna take time for me to rewatch it to find all the cool stuff in it. So to do this right, uh, I need the whole weekend, okay? There's also like the Falcon Winter Soldier we gotta talk about. So please be patient. You can probably expect an in-depth full movie analysis next week. In the meantime, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Voss. Follow New Rockstars, subscribe to New Rockstars for everything you love. Thank you for watching, bye.